Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Mark Brown. I'm a professor of dermatology and oncology um, at the University of Rochester School of Medicine. Well, as far as skin cancer, um, it's basically an abnormal growth of the normal cells that are in your skin. And there are three major types of skin cancer, basal cell cancers, squamous cell cancers, and melanoma. Melanoma, that's one that we worry about the most. Uh, melanoma comes from the pigmented cells, usually appears um, sometimes as a mole that's getting larger or darker. And the concern about melanoma is that of the three cancers that we've talked about, that's one that has the highest chance or the greatest propensity to actually spread to other parts of the body. Even a, a small melanoma can be um, not much larger than the tip of an eraser, but if it's a little bit deeper in the skin, it can spread into the lymph nodes, it can spread to other organs and there's probably about 8,000 people a year in the United States who actually die from melanoma. For melanoma specifically, there are several risk factors. Um, the first is what type of skin you have. So people who have very fair skin, red hair, lots of freckles, um, Celtic origin, those folks have more of a risk just because they don't have the same sun protective factors. The other risk factor is someone who has lots of moles or atypical moles. So most people on average will have 30 or 40 moles, but some people will have 100 moles, 200 moles. And just because of all the moles that they have, there's a little bit more risk of a melanoma developing in one of those moles or even just developing on normal skin. There is something called an atypical mole or a dysplastic nevus. And if a person has lots of moles and they are also atypical moles, then that will significantly increase the risk for getting a melanoma. There's good correlation looking at number of sunburns that kids have had in their development of moles and their potential development for melanoma. Is there a family history of melanoma? That's the other one that I failed to mention. A family history of melanoma is very important. If um, one or two you know, f blood relatives have had melanoma, that significantly increases the risk because of potential genetic factors that are involved early diagnosis is important and part of that is knowing that you're at risk. So we encourage people once a month to take a look at their skin. It literally takes just a few minutes. Stand in front of a mirror um, and wear your birthday suit and take a look at what your moles look like. We're not trying to we're not trying to turn people into dermatologists. We're just trying to get them used to looking at their skin. What do their moles look like? Do they develop a new mole that wasn't there before? That could be important. Are one of their moles changing? Is a mole getting larger? Is it getting darker? Is it getting more irregular? Um, are there symptoms? Is it bleeding? Is it itching? These are all important factors, but looking at your skin can really be very helpful. And after you've done it a few times, you get pretty good at knowing what things look like. And we talk a little bit about what's called the ugly duckling sign, and it's that mole that looks different than the other moles, the ugly duckling that just stands out. And sometimes that's as easy to pick up as it is for a doctor. You just take a look at yourself and say, whoa, that one looks really different, and that should raise some concern. We do talk about the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma, um, A meaning asymmetry as far as the way um, things look, B is border irregularity, um, C is color change, um, D is diameter um, greater than six millimeters, which is about the size of a pencil eraser. And E is one that they've added recently, which, me, which means evolution, which means the mole is changing. So any of those um, together, you know, um, again, should alert a person to the fact that maybe that mole is more than just a mole, maybe it's an early melanoma. There are things that you can do to help prevent skin cancers, and that really comes to being smart about sun exposure. There's no doubt that sunscreens have been clearly shown to help protect the skin and to decrease the risk for skin cancer. I wear sunscreens, my family wears sunscreens, I think it's great. Um, but in addition, protective clothing is very important. You want to wear a hat that has a four inch brim that gives tremendous protection to most of the head and neck area. There's a reason why people working in the rice paddies have these big hats on and there's reasons why you know, the guys in the Foreign Legion have these hats that cover their neck and their ears. If you look at kids in Australia playing on a playground, they all have large hats with a big front brim and their ears and the necks are covered. Australia has a tremendous incidence of skin cancer and they're learning how to be more sun protective. Try to avoid the sun when it's most intense um, and that would be you know the hours between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. that's when the sun is most intense so if you can work in your garden early in the morning later in the afternoon 
that's probably a little bit better as far as the sun intensity is concerned. Those are probably the most important things as far as being sun smart.